Oops. Oh. Oh, that was... All right, um, make sure to join the Kahoot. We'll wait a couple more minutes. All right, I guess we can start. Um, welcome back, everybody, to Android. I hope you guys had a great spring break. Um, Gregor isn't here today. He has a prelim, so I'll be teaching alone. But yeah, today's lecture is going to be pretty um, pretty jam-packed, so hopefully we'll get through it all quickly. But yeah, let me just start the good Cool. <laughs> uh, so does everyone know when it's due? Uh, Thursday. Thursday. Yep. Yep. And late deadline is uh Saturday. So it looks like some people have started it. Like they initialized the project, which is great. Um, I I mean I guess so. I copied this from the last one, but homework three you should just be using you you should be basing it off of homework two. I guess so. This is it doesn't even. Really make sense, but yeah. All right. And I assume this is why most of you haven't started. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Who put that? What happened? No, no volunteers. Is one of you four? <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah, so the difference here between um, on create and on resume is that on create is the callback that they use when the view is first created. So it's like when um, when it's first initialized. 
Now the question here is asking like when the activity comes into the foreground. So that's that comes after an activity is created. It's like in the stage where like you've already created your screen and then you're just like passing it back and forth. Like let's say there's a pop-up. Um, the pop-up has always been there, like just in the background. And then when it comes to the foreground, you're gonna see that on resume is called. Um, on create really is just called once when you first create the activity. This one is also a recap from last week. Yeah, so most of you got that one. Um, so the green one, so allow data to be passed between screens, that's actually an explicit intent. So for the most part, you're going to be using explicit intents when you're navigating between two of your own screens, two of your own activities. And then implicit intents are more for like naming a general action for other apps to handle. That's when you're like implicitly saying, I want to send an email and then your phone like operating system is going to handle that for you. So yeah, good job. Nice. So the whole flow for using permissions in your app is that you first have to declare the permissions that you want to use in the manifest, and then you're going to use the library easy permissions to basically like ask and then override the uh, default permission flow. Mm -hmm. And then this one, like, um, I just threw it in because it's like, uh, we should like kind of ask for feedback. So just ask, answer. Oh, okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, yeah, I I can always stay back if you guys have any feedback at the end of this class. Like, just let me know. But yeah. All right, good stuff. Seems like we haven't forgotten everything since uh, before break. So this, yeah. Today's lecture and then today's this week's discussion will be like pretty like nitty gritty. Um, we're gonna go into a lot of implementation. So yeah, close that out and go into the lecture. All right, so today we're gonna be going over something called recycler views and lazy lists. Um, but before we get into it, uh, just another reminder: homework three is due the eleventh. That's Thursday. And homework four will be released around that same time. We're just like putting the finishing touches in. Um, that'll be like maybe Wednesday or Thursday when homework three is due. So a recycler view is basically a view in which um, you have like a, like a single component here, like a card or like a, all right, this is also a card, I guess, over there. And you can basically scroll through a list of those components. Um, so you can see on the left here, Facebook, you have like, not only you have like the actual posts, but you have this sort of like um, real, in a sense of like these uh, picture cards. And then you can see over here, like a podcast app, you're gonna have like a list of podcasts. And then for Venmo, you're gonna have a list of uh, requests there. So there's basically two ways to implement it. Recycler view is the one that we're going to go over in more depth. In more depth, depth. Um, but list view is basically another way to do it. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, it basically takes in one cell, which is like one piece of data, and then is able to basically uh, render a list of those uh, cells in a uh, in just like in a vertical column. So how it's implemented is that you have a pre-existing list. You can see there it's array of, and then just like four strings. And then when you have a list view in your XML, you can um, basically say something called set adapter, and then you write an array adapter for it. So this array adapter is something that the Android like API already includes. And it 
it's basically like um, an easy way to connect the XML. This is, as you can see, like if you know like the syntax here, this R dot layout junk here is a reference to an XML file. Um, so it's connecting like this built-in XML layout to your um, array of objects here. So yeah, you put the data in the list. And then the array adapter will pull from that list and populate like the view with um, like basically replicating the, uh, this is like the card layout um, for each of these uh, array objects. And so the, the gist of a uh, list view is that it's quite simple. You can see that implementation is like only a couple of lines, um, but it's pretty slow. And the reason for that is that you're bit, you're, you're reusing these, um, or you're, sorry, you're not reusing these card layouts. So basically for every item in this array, you're gonna render like a new layout every time. And that's pretty computationally heavy, especially when, when like you have an app and you want to like have like the scrollable thing like we have before here. Um, you can only see like five of them at a time. So there's no reason, like if your list is like a hundred items long, there's no reason to render all a hundred at the same time. Um, and so list view kind of does that. It renders like all a hundred, it creates a separate layout for each of those items. And so that's why it's pretty slow. Um, and it also supports like only vertical scrolling, which it's, so it's a little, um, it's a little constrained in that respect. And so the solution to those problems is the recycler view. The recycler view is basically another way to write scrollable lists in Android. So what it does is that it's similar to list view in the sense that each cell, each card is represented by another like one piece of data. So like uh, maybe like an object or just like a string. Um, and then cells that are visible to users are created at runtime. So you're really only rendering like the five that are visible on the screen at the same time. You don't have to render the other 95 that are like just off screen. Um, so, and I guess like the, the reason why that happens is that instead of like rendering all a hundred cards, even though they're like pretty similar, you're gonna recycle the same like five or six. So that when like new um, items go off screen, it's gonna go into like a recycle, like sort of like a recycling bin. And then when new items come back on screen, you're going to pull from the recycling bin and then basically take the same XML and just like, just like switch in the new data. Um, so like, here's the better diagram for it. Um, you can see like each of these cards on this side has like an image and a text, a uh, text box at the bottom there. So that when they're scrolling into the screen, you're taking some like old XML layouts and populating them with, or the correct term is binding, you're binding them with the new data. So the data here is just like two things, the image and the text, um, but everything else, like the, this would be like an image view and this would be like, you might use like a constraint layout, all of that gets recycled. So you don't have to go through all of the trouble of like, um, or the computer doesn't have to go through all the trouble of like rendering all that over and over again. It can recycle it and save a lot of time there. Um, so we're gonna go into how we write that. Um, so first thing, we need to define our data class. This is the abstract representation of like the card that you wanna write, the cell that you want to write. So like, this is a pretty complex one. Um, like a user card, if you have like something like Facebook or Twitter or something, if you want to display like a list of users, you might have an ID, you might have a name, like a phone number. Um, oh, this is actually from like one of our apps, but yeah. Um, you, have, you might have like all these different types of um, data that you want to show on the card. And then after you have your data class, you need a layout. Um, this is the XML file that takes in like all the stuff you write in your data class and sort of displays it, right? So you're gonna have your username over there. You're gonna have like the um, other data there. You might have a, like a, like a more strings and like, other strings there, down there. Um, and then you're gonna use a layout manager 
So layout manager basically um, defines how individual um, cells interact with each other or like how they're displayed basically. So the data in the layout here, these define a single cell. And so the layout manager is saying, um, I want to render all my cells in a horizontal list, like the one on the left there, or in a grid view, or in a staggered view, or in a mixed view there. Um, and there's also like vertical lists. Like, you can look into all the different types of layout managers that you can use. Um, and so finally, uh, there's a lot going on here. So you can always go back to this uh, slideshow and then look at the textbook as well. Um, but finally, there's the adapter. Um, so the recycler view basically needs some way to connect the XML views with the data and actually like bind it using the code that you wrote. So what you have to do is write a custom adapter to do that, like how exactly how you want to do that. Um, so the recycler view adapter is basically like an interface. Um, if you know from uh, 2110 or just like Java, it defines like a couple methods that you need to implement in order to connect your data to your like individual cells. Um, and so, yeah, developers will need to create a custom adapter for every recycler view that they write. Um, okay, there's a lot of text in this slideshow. We'll get into the, we'll also go over like how you write it in the code. Um, but yeah, the view holder is sort of the, how you would say, the instance of your one cell. Um, so you have, let me see here, oh, it's not in the slideshow, but for each cell that you have, that's like, it has a user, maybe like an image, like some text, um, the view holder takes that XML and associates it with some like Kotlin variables. So this is like your live instance of it. This is the, this is the class that the recycler view adapter uses to sort of find data to. Um, that might be confusing right now, but like it'll it'll make more sense like once you get into the actual code. Um, so I'll I'll leave it at that for now, but I'll go back to it. Um, and then so when you're actually implementing the adapter, there are three important callbacks that you have to define. Um, on create view holder is basically the initialization function. So every time you create a new card, uh, and remember the recycler view, you're only using the same five cards and you're recycling them. So this will only be called like a couple times rather than like a hundred. Uh, but every time you need to create a new card, what happens is that you're going to use something called the layout inflator and then inflate the XML file for your individual items. This is the XML reference to like a one cell or one uh, one card. Um, and like the rest of that is just a sort of boilerplate. But what it, it's returning is basically a view holder of that um, inflated XML. So a view holder is really just like the XML in Kotlin. It's the it's the find view by ID, all, all that kind of stuff. So let me go to here. And then the on bind view holder is what's called when you take a view holder that's already been created and um, set data to it. Um, so you can see here, you have your view holder and then you have like references to the actual XML IDs here. Uh, they're not XML IDs, they're, they're, um, they're called in variables that you've associated with XML IDs. So you're setting like the book name of the view holder to something in your list. Uh, so the data set is a list and position is what's passed in in order to um, know like where you are in that list, I guess. Um, so you can see like this on bind view holder is taking um, the view holder that you've already created and setting uh, the data in the, in the list to the actual UI. And then finally, um, get item count is like a pretty simple uh, function that you need to implement. You basically just need to uh, declare like how big 
your um, data set is, how big your list is, so that like the recycler view knows how many more it needs to scroll, how many more items it needs to be, how many more items it needs to display. Um, so yeah. Um, and then, yeah, that, that was a lot, um, but it'll make a lot more sense when we get into the code. So just hold on for that. Does anyone have any like quick questions on that? I know it was I know it was a lot. Um, anything on like the view holder or the quick view holder? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, let me see if I can use it. Uh, <laughs> um, so like you have your XML file and it's like defining like a bunch of stuff, right? This is your XML file and you might have like text, view, you know, image view, all that kind of stuff. So the view holder is basically just a class, like an object that associates this XML with like column variables. So you can say like val um, text view, oh, I spelled it, uh, view, can you just read that at all? Um, equals the find view by ID. of like the XML. Right? So then like the view holder holds these like column variables so that when we go back to um, here, your view holder already has these uh, variable references. So you can just set the data immediately. Because you can't like do anything with the actual XML file. You need like this class to like hold like instances of your uh, your component, I guess. Uh, a great question. Yeah. And so like one thing we'll be going into more um like for the next three homeworks is Jetpack Compose and Lazy Lists. So Lazy List is the Jetpack Compose version of Recycler View. Um, so you can see here the Lazy Column, um, which is like a subclass of Lazy List and Lazy Row is also a subclass. But Lazy Column uh, renders your items in a column and Lazy Row renders your items in a row. Like pretty simple there. Um, and so like the good thing about Jetpack Compose and the reason why we prefer it over maybe native Kotlin is that you can see like all this is like a bunch of boilerplate, a bunch of like different things you have to implement. And then if you go to like a lazy column, it's like back to like a couple of lines. It sort of uh, abstracts away a lot of the extra code that you have to write uh, here. So you can see here, the lazy column is your recycler view, I guess. Um, and then each of the items that go in uh, are basically created by using something called items. And then this will basically repeat the text five times. Um, but like the adapter, like the binding that occurs actually occurs in this like anonymous function where index is passed in and then you can change like the actual data that's getting bound to. So yeah. Um, and then just like one more note before we get into the demo that I'm going to quickly try and do. Um, but the reason why we're doing this is that like, we just really don't like to deal with the XML that much. You can see like all of this um, XML code can be uh, sort of diluted down to like a couple lines of Kotlin. So the reason why we're using Jetpack Compose is that it's much more concise and readable. Um, there's no more XML they have to deal with. And then it has sort of a declarative programming style. So we declare exactly like how we want the data to be organized. 
So the column will have spaces of 16 like pixels, and then there's going to be two text boxes, you know, text good and text morning. And so this, all of this code um, is equivalent to like this XML file. And so how it works is that each composable is a function that you basically call in your code and then it'll basically just paint it right there. Um, so the function, the composable here is called profile screen. And then you're going to use the at composable annotation um, to basically tell uh, Android that this is a composable. This, when you call it, this will be painted somewhere. Um, at preview is the same thing as the sort of like the design uh, tab in your Android Studio. This allows you to preview your uh, component uh, composable. And then, so let me just see here. Yeah, composable just functions instead of like having to create like all these new variables and then having to like find you by ID, just write like a function. And then every time you call it, this will like paint the, com the composable where you, where you called it. Um, and then these are the layouts. So column, pretty simple. It renders all its children in a column um, box is pretty simple as well. It's like, um, I think it's like a frame layout in the sense that it'll render all its components like wherever you say they are, wherever you say they want to go. And then they can also like overlap if you want. Um, and then the image is like the image view. And then other composables um, can be put in here. So profile card is another composable function. And then because I, um, like called it here. This is like a children of this uh, profile screen composable. So then like, instead of having to have this like huge hierarchy, you can just like write like, oh, I, in my profile screen, I'm gonna want cards, right? And so finally, like reusability, because you're writing functions, you can write a bunch of, um, like parameters to those functions. So then like, if you want to use a text field, but you want to edit it, like in a lot of ways, like you don't want to change the label and you want to change the modifier and like, you want to change like all this, um, you can just like add extra parameters to your composable functions. And then wherever you call it, you just write like a slightly different parameter for it. So like, if I want a card for a different label, I would just change the label and then call it again. And so, yeah, the, really the takeaway there is that Jetpack Compose speeds up development and it adds uh, flexibility. And so like for that reason, after homework three, we're going to be transitioning, transitioning into Jetpack Compose. And we're going to get a lot more practice on that um, on Wednesday. And I will probably also like release like an extra like YouTube um, like demo for just to like get us up to speed for homework four. But yeah, um, we started with the native Kotlin just to like get a hang of like the lower level stuff in Android. But really, Jetpack Compose just makes like sort of abstracts a lot of that stuff away and makes it a lot easier to write uh, apps quickly. So yeah, so that's the end of lecture. I'm gonna try and demo both the recycler view and the lazy list, the lazy column in Jetpack Compose. Um, so. So I have some code already here and I'm going to go over what I already have just for the sake of time. So we have the main activity and we have like a list of uh, data classes. So the data class here is eatery and it declares two, oh, can I make this bigger? Oh, I forgot. Uh, it declares two things. It declares a name, which is a string and it declares a location, which is a string. And so when I go back to my list of eateries, it's just a bunch of eatery classes with a name and location. So Oak and Shields, Morrison, Beta, like all that. And this is going to repeat a bunch of times. Um, and so I want to basically render each of these eateries in a column. And it, I want it to scroll. And I don't want it to like have to render all like a bunch of 
repeated eateries, I want to just use the same like five or six cards, right? So what we're first going to do is, uh, let me see here. Oh, and then one other thing. So we, we already have the eatery card created in the XML. This is really just like some UI stuff. So let me try and zoom in here. So it's pretty simple. It just has a larger text for the name of the eatery. It has a smaller text field for the name of the location. And then it has a button here. So what we're going to do right now is just write the adapter to bridge the connection basically between the eatery cell XML file and our data here. Because this eatery cell XML file has like no data in it. It just has default like text view, like uh, for the default text. So in order to actually populate it with our real data, we're going to use an adapter. Um, so I created, uh, you can just create like a new file, basically, like eatery adapter, but I already created it here. I'll just create it again, actually. Eatery adapter. Will it even let me? I don't know. It's already happened. Yeah. Um, so I have some notes here to basically go over through the entire flow of creating a recycler view adapter. But what you first have to do is create the adapter class. So we're going to start by saying just class. Um, eatery adapter. And then for now, we're going to leave it just like that. But what is like, what is one thing that the adapter needs to know about like our app? It needs to know what data we have, right? So we're going to first pass in, um, or not pass in, it's going to be in the constructor. But we the eatery adapter needs to know like what our data is um, at the start. So we're gonna pass in the list that we actually have before. We'll say data set is the list of eateries. So then when we actually write the rest of our code, um, it it'll always have access to the code that, the sorry, the data that we want to bind. Um, so down here. We can say uh, here. Yeah. So the code here I've commented out. I'm basically calling eatery adapter and passing in the list here, right here. So now what we need to do now is actually um, type the class. Um, using the interface uh, recycler view adapter. Um, because right now this is just like a just some class. We need to actually tell Android that it's of the type um, uh, adapter, I believe. Yeah. So now what this is saying is that the eatery adapter is of type recycler view adapter, dot adapter. Um, and then we're going to implement the methods now that it's telling us to do that, right? Oh, it won't let us do that. And it won't let us do that because the adapter actually requires a, to, er, requires the ability to know like the type of the view holder. Um, so if you, let me see if I can go get the auto generate code back. But if you see here on Android Studio, you can see adapter has a, like a special generic type VH. So you need to actually declare your view holder class as well in these uh, brackets. So if I go here, what we're gonna write is say eatery, view holder um oh just like based off the notes that i had before here so we're going to create the view holder class um view holder Um, 
And so the view holder will take in a constructor parameter called item view. And so every time we create a view holder, um, we're going to create it using a view. And if we go back to, I think the syntax is in the, let's see here. Oh, no, it isn't. Okay. Um, but yeah, the item view is the view of like the individual components. And then the view holder is basically just going to have this code. It's going to say item view dot, oh, sorry. Um, find sorry item view dot find view by id r dot so what this is basically saying Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So now what my view holder is saying is that the uh, name text uh, variable that we want to like have in our view holder, like here, is um, the XML equivalent of R to ID that name text. Or sorry, this is the column var equivalent of the XML name text. Yeah. So if I say location text, this is like what you've kind of seen before. You need to associate the XML with a column variable. So now we have a view holder. We can finally pass it back into this type here. So we're going to say eatery view holder dot, oops. Yeah, we're going to just import it here. So now the, like the Android um, syntax calendar is pretty happy. We have our adapter. The adapter knows the type of our view holder. It's this class right here. And then the view holder knows like, how we want to basically bind our items. We want to take the XML uh, name text and we want to bind it to the call and variable name text. So now we can finally go back and implement the methods. And this should show up now. Yeah. And you can see we needed this because the individual um, interface methods have a specific type of the eatery view holder. So what we're first going to do is implement on create view holder. Um, so yeah, let me just paste this back here. The view holder associates static XML with live column variables, which is true here. So this is the static XML and this is the live column variable that we can bind to like dynamically. Um, so we go here. So on create view holder, what we're gonna do is what we need to do first is return an eatery view holder, right? Because you can see this is a function, and then the return value is eatery view holder. So we're definitely going to return this. Um, but if we go back to the syntax for on create view holder, all we're doing here is taking our parent and inflating it. Um, inflating like an individual uh, view. This is this is like the process of painting it, basically. Um, so we say val view equals layout inflator dot, what was it? From uh, parent dot context dot 
two frames. Um, and we're going to inflate the R to ID dot, um, what was it? Oh, either is cell, that's right. R dot layout dot either is cell. So we're going to say parent. And then we're returning an eatery view holder holding the view we just painted. So, what this does, this is painting a generic um, card with like no data in it. And then we're going to pass it to eatery view holder. Eatery view holder is going to take that generic card and associate it with column variables. So now we can dynamically bind data to name text, location text, and button. Um, yeah, sorry, it, they're all kind of work interconnected. So it's like, I have to wait until the very end to see that everything comes together. Um, but hopefully that makes a little more sense now is that the view holder is like, we when we first create a view holder, we need just like a basically an empty card. And then we, we can pass the empty card to the view holder that actually instantiates like column variables that we can bind to. And we're gonna get into binding like right now, actually. So you can see that on bind view holder takes in a parameter um, called eatery view holder of type eatery view holder. And so when you go here, we can say holder dot uh, button, I'll say name text. And you can see this name text is the same thing that we first like um, associated with. So we can now just bind it to whatever you want. We can say, uh, we're going to use our data set that we passed in before up here. And we're going to use the position that Android tells us uh, where we are in the list. And we're going to say, we want the position data set uh, at the index position. And we want, let's say, the name of that. Right. So we can say, this is the name. Um, uh, the text. We're gonna set the text of the text here. Holder dot location text dot text equals. Let's get the eatery that we're at, and then get the location. So what this is doing is taking our list data set and binding it to the text view that we kind of pulled out here. Um. So I'm gonna just go over it one more time. I'm gonna sound like a broken record. But um, before we create our view holder, we need to first inflate the empty card. Then the empty card is going to go to the view holder, and the view holder is going to take, um, kind of use the empty card and associate it with column variables. So then we can use those column variables down here when we bind to dynamically set them. And we're going to just set this one here. Yeah. So we can also like set on click listeners here so that like each um like each card might have a slightly different uh functionality when you click it, even though like they're all the same like button. So yeah, and then one more we need to implement get item count. We're just going to return the size of the data set. So yeah, this is like the adapter. Honestly, like it's it, it's a lot of like working together, but if you really look at it, it's not too much to handle here. So let me just run this real quick. Oh, 
Oops. Okay. Yeah. So one more thing. Uh, I needed to find the linear layout manager. I needed to find the layout manager for each recycler view. So this is the recycler view from our main activity. The main activity just has like recycler view there. And we just needed to find like two things dynamically. We're going to say the layout manager, we're going to uh, display all our children linearly. Um, and then we're going to uh, add the adapter down here. So let me run that again. Okay, yeah. And so now you can see that each um, each of these cards have been rendered. And you can see it's like actually very quick because it recycles them pretty quickly. Like there's only maybe 10 or so cards on the screen. But when we scroll, it's going to use the same like 10 cards and just recycle the data in. So yeah. Um, any questions on that, Jacob? Um, yeah, so it's really based on how big your card is. So you can do a couple things. Um, I think I can just make my card bigger. And then like, obviously if the card is bigger, your screen doesn't change size, right? So it's just gonna, there's gonna be less cards on the screen. Um, or if you want to like increase the spacing between them, I think it's also defined in the XML here. Um, so we go to the recycler view. Uh, let's go to Idris cell. Um, Let's see, I'm gonna make the height bigger. I'm gonna make the height, um, like what does 50 look like? Oh, wait, what's going on here? Let's see what's right here. Oh, card view, here we go. Uh -huh. That's width. I want height. Uh, let's see what happens if I rerun this. So now the card is just like much bigger. So then when we rerun the app, you can see like the card is just that size now. And there's going to be a lot less uh, cards on screen. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, go ahead. Can you like copy yourself? Everybody here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not in main activity. It's actually in the adapter, right? Because eatery cell is just the individual card. And so we're using eatery cell here. So on create takes our bare bones XML and basically inflates, like paints an empty card. Um, and then, or not empty card. It's going to paint like the default card, sorry. And then I'm going to take that default card and I'm going to associate it with dynamic variables here. So yeah, good question. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it depends. Like, do you mean like multiple recycle views on the same screen? So like, yeah, you can, so if you look in the main activity, the receptor view takes up the whole screen because that's the only thing like on there. We have a constraint layout that takes up the entire screen and the recycler view like has the width of the parent. So it's the entire screen or width and height of the parent. If I had two recycler views, um, like maybe like each of them half the screen, then like the first half would be scrollable on its own and the second half would be scrollable on its own. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I didn't go over this. I just had it like on there. Um, but you're going to use the same find view by ID to grab the recycler view in the main activity. So the recycler view is just another XML component here um, that you have to grab. And then like, so if you had a second recycler view, you would just do that again with a different like XML ID. And you need to set the layout manager for that other recycler view and then set the adapter. And it'll be, it might be a separate adapter. You could even use the same adapter. And then just like you have the same data twice. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, linearly, I think it's another type of manager. I don't exactly remember. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can probably look this up on your head. Let me. Oh yeah. So it looks like there is like a constant for the linear layout manager that lets you set whether it's horizontal or vertical. Good question. All right. Any other questions? Cool. Okay. Uh, we have two minutes, so I'm gonna try and go like extremely quickly for the Jetpack Compose version. Um, but yeah, we saw we what we had before with like all this boilerplate and you have the Kotlin and XML. So we're gonna move really quickly into Jetpack Compose and we're gonna get a lot more practice on Wednesday. Um, but basically to start, right now, this app has no main activity. Um, or there, there really isn't like a activities in Jetpack Compose anymore. You just think of it as like composable screens. So what we're gonna write here is a screen just to be our main activity, I guess, main screen. So we're going to say composable, at composable. And it's going to be function. Uh, we can call our function whatever, but we're going to call it main screen. And then how we do like UI in Jetpack Compose is we're going to just write our layout right there. So we're going to say, let's first just use like a column that takes up the entire screen. So there it is. That, that's a column. Um, and if we wanted to take up the entire screen, we do it like so. We're going to say modifier um, dot fill max width and dot fill max height. So this modifier um, object is basically the, um, basically where all your, like, I don't know how you would say it, but like, where all the attributes of the uh, XML files go. So like all of this stuff would go along this line. So you just gonna keep calling. You can also say like padding, which is the same thing as mod like margin. And there's a, like a bunch of other things here. You can like, look at them all. You can change the color and stuff like that. And you can even add uh, on click listeners. So yeah, so we have the column and then we're gonna say um, lazy column. And so, yeah, that's all the code we need for our recycler view, basically. This is a, this is our lazy column. This is our recycler view in Jetpack Compose. And if you remember from before, um, you needed the items. Oh, also, like, we're over time. So if you guys need to go, just go. Um, but I'm going to try and uh, run this in, like, two minutes. Um, you, we need the items uh, the syntax here. And then this items basically repeats whatever's inside of it any number of times. So we're gonna say, we're gonna wanna repeat it um, of size, let me see here, eatery list dot size. And then, yeah. So this is gonna basically render any number, sorry, the eatery list number of elements. And it handles all the recycling. I see you guys. Um, it handles all the recycling on its own. So you don't have to do any of that uh, extra stuff. And then, so one more thing, we're gonna create like a card. We don't have the card yet. So we're gonna say eatery card. Um, and it's also gonna be composable at composable. Eatery card, just another function here. And so we're going to go back on the principles of reuse, right? So we're going to give it like parameters so we can just keep reusing the same card. We're going to give it name, I'm going to give it location. And then, like, just for the sake of time, I'm just going to try it and just 
write a really bad composable just to have both of the things in there. But you can have text, a text box with the name. And we'll just have another. So it'll just be a row of two text boxes where one of them is a name, one of them is a patient. Okay, so then we're going to go back here and really quickly just add it into our lazy column. Um, so you're going to say eatery card. And so, yeah. So now you have our lazy column. You have the items that renders like any, like the eatery list number of elements. And then we're going to actually need to find a way to pass in the individual like names and locations using an index. And you can see, if you can see clearly that there is actually, it's actually passed in here um, as IT. So similar to how the recycler view has this um, position uh, int, you have the iteratable int here. So we can just say eatery card, um, eatery list, IT dot name, and eatery list, IT dot location. So if I, oh, it's not going to run because I need to go back to my activity and just add in the main screen. So this is the main activity and it has a screen. This is the entire screen. It's just like a column that fills the entire space. And inside that column, we have the recycler view. And then our card just consists of a row of two text boxes. Yeah, let me just run this quickly. And then we'll be good. Oh, yeah. Oh, do I not have enough? Okay. Um, so it's rendering the entire row, um, but I don't have enough elements to like make it actually scroll. So I'm going to just make the elements a little bigger. Dot width. Well, make them like. 40, 40 pixels big. Oh, it should be height. We want, we want it to be 40 pixels tall. Try that again. Okay, yeah. So now it's going to scroll, and you can see each of these cards has the name and the location. Okay. Um, so that was a lot quicker than having to go through the recycler view stuff, um, using lazy columns which I can compose. Um, sorry, we had to go every time for that, but, um, yeah. Do you have any questions on that? Good. All right. Cool.